This is a solar powered Tesla. If you clicked on this video, you probably have thought of this. A lot of people have thought about solar powered cars. And if you actually go through and crunch the numbers, it's very possible right now to have solar powered electric car. Uh, and within the next 10, 20 years, I think a lot of cars will seriously have solar panels. Uh, if you've seen the Aptera, hopefully one day they've been saying it's going to be out in a year for several years now, as they do. But I think cars like that have a lot of potential to uh, give us something that is entirely off grid. And, you know, I think a lot of people that don't like electric cars are also sort of uh, prepper types potentially. And, and one of the critiques of electric cars may be like, oh, well, if the world is ending or whatever, how are you gonna get around in your electric car when you don't have supercharger stations? Imagine having an electric car that's completely independent of the grid. You just have a solar panel and you can drive almost as much as you want. That would be incredible, right? Not just for these, the, the critiques of the prepper world, um, but also just for, you know, having a car that you can use whenever you want. You don't even have to pump gas. You don't have to plug it in if you if if the if the situation is appropriate. So anyway, let's crunch the numbers on making a solar powered car with today's technology. So this panel that I have right here is a 420 watt panel. Uh, and that does not mean you get 420 watts all the time. Of course, when it's dark, you get zero watts which is unfortunate. Um, and it, of course, depends on your climate. So I'm in Southern California where effectively the amount of solar energy that we get per day uh, is about five hours of, of peak solar time. And so realistically, maybe for, you know, you have a 420 watt panel, you have five hours of, of really quality uh, sunshine best case scenario, maybe you're getting two kilowatt hours a day. Now, what does that translate to actual, actual range of the car? So 420 watts uh, times five hours is about two kilowatt hours. So two kilowatt hours is about six, seven, eight miles of range, depending on the car. And that's with the current efficiencies of cars. And you might say, oh, well, you know, eight miles a day is not enough but eight miles a day is about 3,000 miles per year, which, you know, the average American drives 14,000 miles a year. So we're pretty close. And there's probably a good chunk, maybe 10, 20% of people who aren't going to drive more than 3,000 miles a year, right? Um, and so if you're continuously charging your car every day, if your car is always parked in sunshine and you're in Southern California, Potentially, there is a group of people that would never need to plug in with this setup right here, right? Which is incredible. Unfortunately, the real world efficiencies of this solar panel are a little bit lower. So I should be getting six to eight miles of range with this solar panel and in my region. But in reality, I only get about three miles of range. So this solar panel is connected to, for now, this 2.4 kilowatt hour battery pack and you know you can build custom setups uh, with charge controllers and all that and, and battery banks and you know have all of those pieces or you can get just this big pack that has everything built in not as customizable but much easier uh, this one I found on Facebook marketplace for $500 it was brand new normally they're about a thousand dollars for 2.4 kilowatt hours and I think 2.4 to about two kilowatt hours is, is the minimum you want to go. So this big old battery only holds about six to eight miles of range. So basically it could charge, um, you know, halfway in a day and then store that energy at night. Um, and so it's something at least. And we can see right now how it's charging. So we're getting almost 200 watts of power from the solar panel and we're charging at a rate of 1.5 uh, kilowatts. So we'll discharge this battery in about an hour. So realistically, it takes about three days to fully charge this battery bank, and it takes about 45 minutes to discharge it completely. Kind of unfortunate. And this is the slowest charging speed uh, charger plugged in right now. 
Uh, it charges at about three to four miles an hour. And another thing to note with um, you know any inverter that uh, you're gonna charge your car with, you need one of these uh, grounding plug thingers uh, to sort of trick the uh, the car charger into thinking that the whole system is grounded. Of course, this isn't you know traditionally grounded because it's not connected to ground at all. It's a self-contained unit. So, you know, if you really wanted to have a solar-powered car that drove um, 12-ish thousand miles a year with current technology, you would need five or six of these panels theoretically. Realistically, you would need something like 10 of these panels, which isn't very practical, right? But this solar panel is probably about 20% efficient, maybe 10, 15% efficient. It was a, it was a cheaper panel. Um, and solar cells within the next decade or so should get up to about 30% efficiency. So the limit of silicon solar efficiency is about 28%, but there's other technologies as well. So commercial solar already is about 20% efficient. That could potentially go in the next decade up to 30 percent, um, especially with new technologies like perovskites coming coming around. Um, so 50 percent increase in solar efficiency. Cars are also going to get more efficient. So this car gets about 310 watt hours per mile. There's already Teslas on the market that get 250 watt hours per mile. In the next decade or so, I'm sure we'll see some electric cars with efficiencies of closer to 200 watt hours per mile. Um, and so maybe that's a 10, 20% increase in efficiency. And so with these small increases in efficiencies, these are all gonna add up. So, you know, in a decade or two, we could have solar panels on the car and practically drive 10 to 15,000 miles a year without ever having to plug in your car, which would be fantastic. So if, you have, if you've done this yourself, please leave a comment below and let me know. Um, if you have any questions about this setup or the, or the math that I included in this video, let me know. Um, but I think this is really cool. I wanted to build it out just to see, you know, how practical it actually is, how realistic it actually is outside of the calculators. So I hope this video was helpful for that. Um, the solar panel I got for about $120. The battery bank, like I said, I got for about $500. And this charges you know one kilowatt a day best case scenario so that's that saves me about 20 cents in electricity so 20 cents times 300 day, 360 days in a year you know we're not looking at a, a too good return on investment right um, one of the big upgrades potentially and I, I want to pursue this more but I think it would be a lot of scary high voltage electrical stuff um, I want to charge the car directly and that would completely eliminate the need for the battery. Um, so if we could take the solar power, run it to, uh, I think uh, the system in this Model S runs on 400 volts. So we need um, an inverter or a, a transformer that takes the solar panel energy, steps it up to 400 volts and charges the battery directly. Not sure how practical that actually is, but then your return on investment would be a year or two with a solar panel like this, which would be fantastic, right? Then there would be, you know, really good motivation to actually start doing this to cars, start outfitting cars with solar panels. Um, one more little yap, there are flexible solar panels out there. They're a little bit less efficient and less reliable apparently. And then you could more efficiently cover your car uh, with a flexible solar panel. So anyway, if you like this kind of stuff, subscribe to the channel, like the video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.